Church here in Dickinson and St. John Lutheran Church in Richardson, and I'm your guest preacher tonight. Pastor Lisa is actually in Richardson tonight, so we're just switching places, and she's leading worship there. It's great to be with you this evening. I'll talk a little bit more about our round robin when I have a chance to do that during my message, but I want to thank our other worship leaders and assistants who are here tonight. We get the chance to gather tonight around open evening prayer and the meal of grace that will happen during the worship service. I'm glad you're here. We'll begin with our service of light on page two.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The first reading of scripture for this evening comes from the book of Matthew. It's chapter 26, verses 26 through 29. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The second reading is from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First of all, Thank you for participating in this Lenten Round Robin this year. It is fun for your worship leaders to rotate to different congregations at this time of year. We get to see some new places, some new faces, and even try some new recipes during the meal preceding our worship services. Midweek Lenten worship themes differ from year to year. This year, our focus is on Luther's small catechism. The small catechism was designed as a teaching tool of the faith, not for the church, but for the home. Luther intended the home to be the place where faith was first shared and taught. To that end, he created the small catechism, a simple explanation of the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and the sacraments. He included basic prayers for morning and evening and suggested ways to worship, praise, and revere God during each part of the day. Therefore, this Lent, pastors and preachers are rotating in and out of our church to highlight some of the parts of Luther's small catechism, namely the Ten Commandments, Holy Communion, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and Holy Baptism. Tonight, if you haven't guessed it, our focus is on Holy Communion. First, a question. If you could choose your last meal on earth, what would it be? Now, I want you to think seriously about this question because I'm going to ask you to answer it out loud later. Honestly, I have never myself thought about this question. In my family, whoever is having a birthday gets to pick their birthday meal, so that's kind of the same thing. I'm curious, how many of you in your families get to pick your birthday meal? Can I see a raise of hands? So quite a few of you, you get to pick the meal you eat on your birthday, so I'm assuming it's some of your favorite things. When I was a kid, we got to pick our favorite kind of birthday cake, but we didn't get to pick the meal for that supper. 
So I guess the tradition for my wife and I, um, we started that for our children because we do get to pick the meal in my family for birthdays. So what would you pick if you had to choose your last meal on earth? Don't tell me yet. First, I'm going to tell you what I would pick. My last meal would be naan, which is an Indian bread, shrimp with pasta and Alfredo sauce, a can of Coke, cheesecake that my sister-in-law, Shanna, would make, a white chocolate raspberry swirl cheesecake, and a chocolate shake. And I would cherish that chocolate shake, a thick one, and I'd eat it with a spoon. I have often thought that I am the happiest when I start eating a chocolate shake, and I am the saddest when it's all gone. So how about for you? What are some of the things that you would like to eat for your last meal on this earth? Since there are so many of us, I would like you to tell someone either next to you or in front of you or behind you. Tell them what you would pick for your last meal on earth. Go. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for taking some time to share with each other what some of your favorite foods would be if it was your last meal on the earth. And it's a good thing that we ate before we started talking about all these favorite foods because I don't feel like I need to go out and get something because I'm pretty full from the meal downstairs. Did you know that a special last meal for those sentenced to die has a long history. There are reports of the ancient Greeks, Chinese, and Romans 
all giving the doomed a final meal. In medieval Europe, the last meal had a symbolic significance. By accepting the food, the prisoner was considered to be making peace with the executing authority and renouncing all vengeance, including in the afterlife. The meal supposedly kept the condemned from returning as a ghost to stalk the involved in the execution. And it was thought the better the food, the more secure the executioner, judge, and witnesses were against being haunted. I didn't know that. Well, you probably know that Jesus' last meal, famously known as the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and wine to be a part of his last meal with his disciples. Using common elements, he made this meal so special that we recreate it any chance we get to remember him and his promises to all of us. His last meal became a meal for the rest of us to eat for the rest of our lives, to remember him by. When we eat this meal, we remember that we are loved, we are forgiven, and that we are promised eternal life. Martin Luther says that Holy Communion, or the sacrament of the altar, brings forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. And more importantly, Luther says, whoever believes in the words given for you and shed for you have what they declare, namely forgiveness of sins. So who is worthy to receive Holy Communion? Luther says, the person who has faith. He says the most important words in all of Holy Communion are the words for you. Believing that this gift is for you is all that mattered to Martin Luther. So Jesus used bread and wine to symbolize his body and blood. His body broken and his blood shed is the source of life for you. By receiving them, often we remember what he has done for us, freed us from our sins, and provided eternal life. So from the church's perspective, that's the importance of receiving Holy Communion, to remember what Christ has done for you. And that's what's required of you when you receive it, to believe in the words for you. But what about your perspective? Why is Holy Communion important to you? I'm curious about some of the important moments of your life when Holy Communion really mattered to you. I can think of several big moments in my life when receiving communion really meant a lot to me. I remember receiving communion in my home church in Carrington, North Dakota, the Sunday before I moved to Australia, where I was going to live for a half a year. It was a big move, an exciting but scary opportunity, and I didn't know anything about my future. It could have very well been my last time to be in that church in my hometown receiving communion that Sunday before I left to travel halfway around the world was a source of comfort and strength. Another big moment for me was at one of my seminary professors' funeral. While I was in seminary, my worship professor, Ralph Smith, was killed along with his eight-week-old grandson in a head-on car accident the day after Thanksgiving. Communion was served at their funeral, which was held in the chapel at the seminary where he taught. Tears streamed down my face as the bread was placed in my hand and when the wine was given to me. I'll never forget it. 
Another big moment in my life when I received Holy Communion was around my mom's hospital bed in Bismarck. She was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She, under, she underwent a surgery to remove it, but it failed. She was left to die. Around her bed, my brothers and sisters, my dad, my wife, and my four-month-old daughter gathered, and we received Christ's body and blood. No doubt you have your own memories of big moments in your life when receiving Holy Communion spoke to you or touched you in a profound way. And even if you don't, receiving Christ's body and blood in the most common and ordinary and boring of all situations is still profound because Christ comes to you in this mystery to love you, to promise you eternal life. You don't have to understand all of this. You just get to receive and believe. It's all God's doing out of divine love for you. So tonight, we're going to very simply practice this receiving and believing. I made some bread for us this morning, and we'll use that along with some wine as we encounter Christ's body and blood, Christ's love. With hands extended, you can receive, and with the word, Amen, you can believe.
ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding, and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I'll invite you to stand and share the peace with one another, however you are comfortable.
So we decided, we, the powers that be, decided that we're going to commune um, one half of the sanctuary and then we'll switch and go to the other half of the sanctuary. So you'll come forward down the center aisle and receive the bread and then you'll receive the wine or juice by intention. So hang on to that piece of bread and dip that into the cup that you prefer. This is a flour bread recipe, so if you prefer a gluten-free wafer, please tell me and I'll come to the altar to get one for you. So we'll start on this side and then we'll move to that side. Please come. All is ready and all of this is for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you 